Hello, once again, Odyssey families. It's Josh the Behaviorist. So this week is uh, desensitization strategies and considerations for masks. Uh, this came up in an IEP. Um, well, it's come up a lot of times, uh, but it just came up in IE, a couple IEPs last week. And I wanted to make a video to kind of talk about, um, well, the different options that are available and sort of the desensitization strategies that you can use, considerations you might have for your learner. Um, especially again we are returning to campus at some point the transition will happen um, but we're not sure exactly when but this is another one of those processes the same as um, a lot of the things that we talked about already in the recent weeks um, that is going to be really important to start you know today or really the best time to start is yesterday but the second best is today so let's get started um, on masks it's not clicking over okay there we go so um considerations from your learner this is the first step before we even start anything um what's the history of your learner um the big thing is if there's prior refusals um the one thing that and, and avoidance of anything covering their head or face uh, if you have a student that's uh, sensitive or avoidant of um toothbrushing uh, any kind of anything around the face or the head um, that's going to be something that you really want to consider. And you're going to probably have to start slower, a lot slower than uh, other students that tolerate all those things. So it, that's a really big starting point. So if you know that your student, your learner is really sensitive to those kind of sensory experiences, the mouth, the eyes, the ears, or if they have, um, I kind of glossed over a little bit with a history of trauma. If there's, um, if they've had traumatic injuries to their mouths, their eyes, their nose, their face, um, you know, dental work where they're really um, more resistant than sort of, I mean, everyone's going to be resistant, but more than normal, uh, whatever normal is. Um, but you really have to be be cognizant of that and be, you know, you might have to check, you know, whatever we're doing, whatever we're talking about, you might have to cut that back. You might have to do it even shorter distances and or shorter lengths of time that, I've, that I'm sort of suggesting here. And again, uh, I've said this on every video, but these are just suggestions. These are just ideas. This is a framework. Um, your student might be different. You might be able to hop ahead a lot quicker uh, or you have to do things a lot slower. But uh, what I say on this number of times is slow and steady. Um, doing things too fast, uh, expecting too much is just going to get more resistance and it's just going to be harder and, and make it a longer period of time uh, to, to work on these skills. So. Uh, the next thing to consider is uh, willingness to place the mask near the face, like right now. What's the baseline? Uh, will they mess around with masks? Are there masks they'll, they'll wear that aren't sort of safety masks, but they might put on, you know, masks for characters? Uh, they might put on funny hats. Uh, those sort of things. You want to see how how much do they wear? That same thing with the coverings on their heads and faces. Some students love wearing hats. Sometimes you have the beanie down. You have. I've had. A bunch of students over the time, uh, clients over the, the years I've worked with, they love having the the bill down, so they're kind of they get to be kind of in their own little the little cave. Um, using all of those the, that little bits of information are going to help us make a better informed decision on how what expectations and what kind of mask and all of these things. Um, then the third one that's sort of the most crucial one is health concerns. So if there's any history of respiratory issues. Uh, breathing, you know, uh, lung issues, asthma. I know there's some students on campus that have some pre-existing conditions with respiratory issues. Um, so clearly that is going to be something, you know, above my pay grade and my expertise. Consult with your doctor and see if they have any recommendations. Um, clearly, if there's respiratory issues, they might not be returning to campus as quickly as some other students. Um, that might be a consideration too. Um, but you still have to live your life and and even to be able to wear a mask to go out especially this is today's uh, kind of peeling back you know sometimes I, I record these in advance today i'm going to be posting this this is december it's monday december 7th 2020 um, and there's a lot of changes that have happened since my last posting and since even friday of last week so as there's more restrictions you know it's going to be harder and harder to go out and get space and and get that you're still to be able to go into stores more and more uh doesn't doesn't really matter where you are in the sacramento area around um, odyssey you're gonna have to wear a mask you should be wearing a mask so um not just for our campus but really for community outings for any kind of exploration any kind of uh, leisure and, and outdoor time 
it's more and more that you're going to need to wear a mask. So that's one of those things that we have to consider. Uh, let's see. Next stone is okay. So I, my my screen might be blocking, and I'm going to go off screen for a second. Stop sharing for a second. But let's select the right kind of mask. I'm going to talk about them, and then I have a handful here uh, from just my own personal stash at home, uh, different ones that that you might see that you might want to check out. Um, I'm not making any recommendations, but it's just more of things that you need to consider. So let's talk about them. different types of masks. So we have the different kinds of masks. You know, uh, we have the N95 mask. We also have the face shields. So there's shields. Uh, think about the cloth, and we'll kind. Of, we'll probably try to use the camera um, a little bit. My camera is not great, um, but I'll try to show a little bit of detail about the different materials. I'm not a big, um, I'm not my, I don't have a great information base as far as fabrics. Uh, I go just by kind of look and feel and, and, and sensory. We want to think about the sensory component. Um, filters and no filters. Uh, I'll show you one that like this one, they have the pockets for the, the filter. Um, or I think, I guess it's here. There's a pocket for the filter. Um, that is another consideration. If you have a mask that without a filter might be more um, palatable to your learner, they might be okay with a mask without a, 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 a filter. Um, maybe they will be tolerating over time, tolerate one with a, with a filter. Uh, they're also the valves. I have the, um, here's an easy one to see. So there's the one with the valve, this is a kid's size mask. Um, has the valve and it has the filter. Um, that's another one that might be something your student your learner might tolerate a mask like this a cloth mask without the filter or that without the valve because the valve is kind of weird so we'll kind of talk about that in a second and then designs um you know i have a lot of black masks i don't really care i'm not really interested in that i'm just for you know function over form um but you know if you have a student that is really into you know animals it's my daughter's mask um, that might, that might make them wear it. Honestly. Um, I think compliance with this one is a lot better than this one. That's a little less exciting. It's got stars, but, um, you know, maybe you, you know, hearts might be the thing. Um, you know, think about that. Think about the design. So let's, I'm going to go stop share for a second. I'm right here. So let's, let's kind of go through all these masks. So, you know, the, the lowest one, the one with the, I would say the least material, least resistance, but effective is one of these, you know, the disposables. Um, this might be what your student can tolerate. Um, you know, for long-term wearing, probably not the best, you know, you're not gonna wear it for multiple days, uh, but for a day or for an outing, uh, might be the thing that you can get them to wear. Um, these are really light straps. So they're not gonna be, you know, digging into the ear too much. I'll just put it on, you got the nose, little nose thing you bring it around it's pretty good um, if your student is going to tolerate that great um, but this might be you know if you're ecologically concerned you know disposable is is workable um, but it also might not be the thing that your student's going to wear your learner's going to wear it's also really light and probably could come off pretty quickly or pretty easily uh, some of these other options actually have a little bit better um, fit um, that one actually fits my face pretty well. Um, let's look at, um, well, then there's the, the standard, there's next standard, which is that in 90, this is an old N95 mask. I, I've had these for years uh, for you know woodworking and working in the garage and working uh, out in the yard and stuff. Uh, these used to be a dime a dozen. These weren't, these weren't a, a premium. Now they are. Um, and these are, I know that they're saying they want you to use these only for um, uh, healthcare workers, their PPE. Uh, this is an old one, so it's not one that I've kept out of circulation, but um, it is not all that, I mean, it's effective, but it's not that comfortable. And if you think about your student, uh, you know, the, the fabric in here, fabric, I mean, it's like paper, uh, it's not comfortable. Um, it's kind of fogs up. The nose part is not, I mean, there's a little bit of foam. Um, it's not super comfortable. It's kind of scratchy. If you have a student that's sensory sensitive or has you know preferences away from scratchy stuff probably not the not the thing um, again this one probably has the advantage it's really really soft um, again you're not gonna be able to wear it more than once but it, it is soft it's got that going for it and it's effective i know these effective the other thing is i've done some research on this um you know for myself uh as most of us probably have you know some of these aren't 
going to be the top of the line as far as um, you know spread for spread. Um, but we've got to start somewhere and work our way up. So that's what I'm sort of looking at this. If you have a student, a learner that's not wearing a mask at all, this is where we're going to start is sort of figure out which one will they wear um, and start building that up. That's going to take a while. So there's N95. There's also the KN95. There's all sorts of variations. Um, those also come, I've seen the KN95, I've seen them where they they have more material and they fold up and around like they go up like this one stops you know for me on my head it'd probably be different on a younger student uh, and i've got a big head um it only goes to the cheek um those other ones i actually saw a family member recently and they had one that was up you know it went all the way up here it looked pretty comfortable i didn't touch the mask so i don't know what exactly the um what the material felt like it might be more palatable to your student i, I don't know um but what I'm looking at is you need to be able to offer things. And I'm gonna talk about that in a second um, on another screen. I guess I'll move up to the next step up is this one. It's a kid's mask, kid size mask. It's just really thin, really, really thin, uh, probably cotton. Um, it's got a space for a filter, um, no valve, really thin. Uh, you know, if you're starting off something like this, if you're just hanging out at home and just trying to get your, your learner to wear it at all, might be a good start because it is it's pretty soft it's um it's not like t-shirt material but it's it's pretty soft i mean definitely cotton or something the straps don't adjust um they're pretty nice but something like this might be a first you know if we're really looking at a, a slow integration and slow desensitization of this this might be a good starting point um without the filter and we'll talk about that in a second um next step up well, I'll, I'll do this one again. This one has a spot for a filter. Um, I got these on Etsy, so um, I, I'm not getting a referral. Uh, but uh, this, I actually really like that it's got a different kind of material on the inside, kind of a jersey knit, uh, and there's a pocket for the filter. Uh, this is really soft. I think that's the advantage. If you have a student that is really sensitive to textures, um, this is a really, really soft one. I mean, on the outside, it's super soft. Uh, on the inside, it's fairly soft. And because it has that kind of jersey knit, um, it's pretty nice. It's got the multiple layers. It's a nice, tight woven. I don't know about effectiveness. Um, so if you have uh, concerns about the health part, uh, you know, probably want to put a filter in it. Um, or if you can find a version of this that looks, you know, could be different animals, different characters. We talked about that with characters. Um, this might be, um, you know, this has some advantages because it has the face on it. It's funny. Uh, it might might tip the, be a tipping point for some of your your learners that that um, this might you know this over this or something without you know with stars that stars aren't going to really move the needle too much. This might be a good option. Um, we'll talk about filters too. This one um, is another. It's one of those PM two point five. I think I got this on Amazon or probably Amazon. Um, again, has a pocket, has the 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 valve. Again, the valve might be something that some learners aren't going to really be too thrilled about. The, the filter might be something that they're not going to be thrilled about. Um, and it's also rather thick. Uh, again, it's not a t-shirt material, but it's probably cotton. I guess I should have looked that up. It's, um, it's thicker. I feel like it's got some sort of um, padding in it. So as far as like the, the exchange of air, it's pretty good. It's got the filter on it. But um, it might be kind of thick and it actually, you know, I, I don't have, this is my daughter's, it's a kid size mask, but um, it's pretty thick. And I imagine that, you know, especially a student that, you know, if the valve, I guess with the valve that you're going to get the airflow, but if it was this material on its own, I think it would be really way too thick. And I think sensory wise, especially if you have a student that's uh, resistant to putting stuff over their mouths, this probably isn't the thing. Um, I think the airflow is okay, but also it, it's just not probably the best fit. Um, stepping up from that, I have a couple, you know, I got this one. Let's talk about this one. This was another Costco or not Costco, uh, Amazon special uh, filter. Same sort of thing as the, as this one uh, has the pocket, has the filter. Um, I wore this one for quite a while. It's got the filter in it. <clears throat> it's a little more comfortable because it's got the little, uh, the chin, the little, um, the seam goes around the chin, so it does form. It's got the little, um, probably a little piece of metal in there for the nose. Fairly comfortable. 
um, you know, the adjustable strap so you can maybe start if you have a, a and again, we'll talk about this in a second, but if you have a learner that's not too thrilled about stuff being around their ears, um, this might be better to get something with an adjustable strap, uh, uh, this little adjustment so you can make it looser, start it loose, slowly tighten it up to where it's got that tight airflow. Uh, and then this is the last one I have, oh, actually I have one more after that. The last one I have as far as masks is this, um, I got this at Costco or not Costco, Home Depot, uh, two for 15. I forget what the brand is, but it's got a little, I don't know, has some sort of copper thing, I'm not sure, but it's got the pocket um, for the for the filter. Uh, it's pretty, for me, for my head size and everything else, this is really, really comfortable. It's a little thinner, uh, so it's nice it has the filter. This might be a good good sort of starting step for your, for your learner if they are resistant to something heavy over their face. Again, I'll talk about it in a second uh, on a future slide, but um, you're gonna wanna start doing this stuff at home. You're not gonna wanna jump to making a trip to Costco or, or Walmart or something right off the bat. Um, when you're doing this at home, you might wanna try out a bunch of different masks, whatever you can find around the house or whatever people have tried, try those out and see. This one for me is the most comfortable of all the masks I've worn, um, bar none. Now, as far as excuse me, as far as the airflow and whether it's catching everything, I can't say. Um, but again, it's a lighter one. It's a much lighter material. Um, it feels like it's two to three layers. It's got the pocket, it's got the filter. So there's that another one. Last one again from my garage, but you know, these days, uh, the face shield. Um, if you have a student that will tolerate something around their head, like if they'll tolerate a headband, this is pretty much a headband. Um, the foam on that is not great. I think this is from Harbor Freight Tools, if you're into Harbor Freight. Um, I guess it's adjustable. I've got a big head, so I never adjust it. It's pretty tight on me. Um, so I don't know how, you know, if, if, if you have to go out and there has to be something, you know, finding the lowest level um, that your student will wear, maybe it's that disposable mask with this combined maybe that's the lowest level but that is still safe then that, that's pretty much following what we should be doing so um you know working up to these thicker masks that have filters and all sorts of doohickeys um that might be okay but we just really need to work on something to start so um let's talk about let's go back to the screen can share screen and talk about really what we're going to do with these masks now that we've talked about them all. Um, let me review this, make sure we're good. So the designs, yeah, I think we talked about all of this. Um, really, you need to assess, and I, you know, first step one was the assessment, like what is your learner into? What is their, what are their preferences? What are their things they try to avoid? Uh, think about that while you're, while you're looking for a mask, especially I, I have talked to um, recently a few students, a few families where they haven't left the house at all. So they have, virtually no experience wearing masks. And at some point, you know, vaccines coming and all these other things, they're coming, but we're still probably gonna need to wear a mask at least a little bit here and there um, and not knowing when the timing and everything. So the more that we can give, uh, find a mask that'll work for your student or work, work for your learner, we, we need to do that. And, and so that's why I wanted to review some of these. Um, of course, now it's not clicking over. Okay, introduction. So this is before you're expecting them to wear it. Uh, this is just for introduction. This is like a pre-step almost. You want to offer choices, especially with you know these all these options. And this is just I had in my household. Um, I've gone through a couple different ones. This is just what I had available. Uh, you want to let them explore, let them mess around with them, let them touch them, let you know feel them to their face. You know, I mean, some students are really into that. Let them smell it, let them feel it, let them rub it, let them you know anything they want to explore. You want to desensitize them to even having the mask in their hands. I, I know that there's probably students that won't even touch a mask. So if you're not even, a, if your student isn't even touching a mask to get them to put it on their face and around it, it's the same as a uh, food flexibility. If a student won't even touch food, let alone put it in their mouth. I mean, that's, those are in, that's an enormous chasm between touching it and putting it in your mouth. You might be in that same sort of chasm with this. Um, you're starting out with them not wanting to put this anywhere near their head. Um, so you've got to start somewhere. And one of those things is 
offer the choices and start out. So you might start out with one of those, like the really light, easy masks, uh, as, you know, the, the one with the, the logo on it or you know something special on it. Um, you know, Etsy and all those sort of uh, sellers, they do, you know, you can make custom masks where they have every variety of animal and character. That might be your in um, and follow it, follow your, your learner. Um, allow the learner to explore them. That's why I said that. Model it. You want to make sure you're wearing it, especially at home. You're probably not wearing your mask too often. It's usually, you know, if your student is staying home and you're going out, they're probably not seeing you wearing a mask. So we need to work on that too, is making sure if, if your student is, is not, has not been leaving the house and they haven't seen you in a mask, you want to make sure that they see you wearing a mask. So it's not unusual. It's also going to help when we get back in the classroom. That's a whole other thing because we'll all be wearing masks. Um, the other thing that I brought in here, and it's, it's if applicable to your learner, but you can always read a social narrative or talk about wearing masks and why we wear masks. Depending on where your student is by age and functioning level, they might not get anything from that, but it's another tool. So that's why I wanted to mention it. Uh, the next one is the first time wearing, and I say wearing kind of loosely, but um, this should be done at home when you have time and your learner's in a good mood <laughs> and you're not leaving the house. So you want to make sure that you can give this step time. You want to set yourself up for success. I know I say that in one of the other slides, but you want to start out with just, again, following their lead, make it fun, make it a game if you can. Um, you know, use all those things. I know we've talked about a million different strategies in other videos, but first then tokens, um, you know, schedules even, you can do a schedule. Um, you want to make sure that you're praising them. You want to really amp it up. And if you have a, a, um, a learner who has not really worn a mask before at all, and they immediately do this, you want to hammer them with praise, uh, you know, give a hug, give a tickle, whatever, whatever they want. If some don't want hugs and tickles, whatever they want, you want to reinforce them as much as possible. So they understand that this is a positive thing. <laughs> I feel ridiculous holding a dog mask up, but, um, that, that wearing a mask is a positive thing. Um, you wanna make it quick. You wanna get in and out and make it a, a positive experience for them when you're doing this first step. Um, you might just have them hold it here, you know, near their head, um, near, maybe near their chin, maybe here is enough. Maybe to bring it to their face for a half second, reinforce it. Anything in that, you know, you know that the, the eventual, you know, the terminal behavior in behavior terms is, you know, we want that final behavior is going to be them wearing a mask for an hour or two hours or five hours at school, whatever it might be, or out in the community. But we've got to start with something a lot lower than that. And that might be just holding it. It might be. And then maybe the second time around, then you expect them to maybe hold it here. Then you might expect them to like rub it on their face or even just bring it up for a half second, you know, again, like half second or even just that you're gonna take baby steps. And, and as I said before, if you have a client or a student that won't wear it at all, won't touch it at all, you know, this might be week two is bringing it to here. Um, some students, some learners might just go right away and go right to it, <laughs> it really depends. Um, and again, I said, like at the bottom, it's uh, you might need to do this a lot and over days and, and you're gonna to wanna to do it over days. You're gonna to wanna to do it repeatedly like not like 10 times a day but you're going to want to do it consistently so you get that exposure the student gets the exposure um and and you can build up that tolerance um before you raise the bar as i said before so before you actually put the mask on um you want to get them to sort of just get used to it get accustomed to it same as anything else we've talked about in all the all these other videos and i know with your aba pro co programs that's a caveat that I didn't actually give at the beginning uh, i usually do is if you have an in-home ABA program, uh, I would guess that no matter where the funding is coming from, if it's insurance, if it's the regional center, if it's Medi-Cal, if it's private pay, clearly they should help you with this. I'm, I'm just going to say that kind of a blanket term. I usually try not to say that kind of stuff as they the blanket, but they should help you with this. This is a functional skill. This is a community skill. It's an independent living skill. It is in this day and age right now, as we, as I speak, this is a crucial thing to allow your student to socialize and to have a full life that falls under any umbrella that I know of as far as funding for an in-home program. So that in-home program should help you with this. Um, 
I usually, I'm going to get off my soapbox now, but they should. <laughs> Extending that time. So just as any other multi-step. So we talk about, you know, toothbrushing. If you have a student that won't even let you get near their face with a toothbrush, let alone get it in the mouth and start brushing, you're going to need to start slower. So that's why I said here, like holding the mask, their face, not even on their face. It might be in front of their face. One second, give that token, give that praise. Um, one second, two seconds. You might do one second for a week and just give five tokens. Quick, 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 quick. Oh, good job, good job, good job, good job. You want to just deliver that token, deliver that praise, whatever it might be, and get in, get out, and do that. Then the short term might be loosely on their face. Let me find one that I can adjust pretty easily. I'm going to use this one and loosen it up. It's um, the one with the... You might want to start loosen it all the way you can so it's like not even hanging it's, it's hanging here you might want to reinforce this for a couple of days and then slowly bring it up higher a couple of days a couple of days a couple of days get them used to it being over their face and over their nose it might take them a while then you start adjusting it and tightening it up that might be one week two weeks one week two weeks three weeks, four weeks, you might stop one at one of these. Sorry, I'm watching myself because I'm trying to make sure I know where my mask is. Each of those might be a week. It, it might be a day it could, if you're lucky, uh, but it might be a week. So um, starting slowly and really moving on it um, slowly, slow and steady. Um, and then again, I said with the mask slightly tightened, tightened, tightened. Um, then when you're talking about the filter too, you might have a mask that you introduce it without a filter. You get that, the ball rolling without a filter. Get it going, get it going, get it going. That might be a game changer once you put that filter in because it does, I don't want to say it restricts the breathing, but it changes the feel of it. And when we have our sensory sensitive and just any of our students that are sensitive to this um, or will be sensitive to this, you want to make sure that that is, that is going to be a, a kind of a big jump. Um, so I've got kind of going back and forth on this. I, I don't know if you'd want to introduce it with the filter in there because inserting the filter might change the, change the, 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 uh, the ball game. Um, it, you know, you really want to work with your student, your learner and sort of figure out what they need. And, and you know, your learner better than, than I can at this moment, especially at this distance. So, um, it's another step you might, you have to, it's another consideration. I should have probably put that in one of the other steps. Um, so you want to work slowly up to a few minutes of wearing the mask around the house before you start traveling on the community. So you want to build that tolerance because you, you know, you can't run without walking or crawling. You don't want to do that Walmart, Costco, crazy trip or crazy experience when all you can get them to do is wear it for 30 seconds at home. You want, if you know, especially, you know, the transition back to school, if you know they're going to be transitioning back to school or there's a big event or something, or you guys need to travel, I know there's all sorts of travel advisories, but if there's something that you need to, you need to make sure that you're doing it ahead of time. You don't want to jump the gun and try to do something uh, well above what your student and your learner is comfortable with um, in, a, in a higher stress environment where you're like, you know, it's the day that you need to go back to school and they've never worn a mask and you're just going to try to force them to wear a mask that's not going to be successful. And I think I've talked about that in other ones. No one's going to be happy with that, that situation. You're going to be stressed. They're going to be upset. Everyone's going to be frustrated. So you want to do it ahead of time. You want the more that you can do it ahead of time um, and, and prep that and really extend that time naturally. I don't want to say naturally, naturally, but extend it over time and not jumping and trying to make it a sprint. Um, when you do start going out of the community, um, you know, just as before, slow and steady, set yourself up, so everyone to be up, to be successful. Um, but remember priming, remember all those, there's a whole video on antecedent behavior interventions, behavioral interventions, um, set the deal, the first then tokens, the social narratives, um, all of those things, front load all of those things. So they know what the deal is. Um, but what I will also recommend is start with a short trip out. I've, I've done that with, with, with just any community outings. I always say like 7-Eleven, Mini Mart, um, used to be like, go to the gas station, go in, like walk through. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's going to be kind of awkward, but walk through. So that when they're wearing their mask, you walk through, you make it a 30 second trip. It's the shortest trip you'll ever have to a store, but it's a first step and you're going to build on it. 
um, find a store that's empty or contact the store ahead of time to find the right time, like a time that's really dead. You want it to be just empty. So if you do have an issue, if your student does take the mask off, the, the person at the, the counter, the person, the, the employee there that's running the shop is going to know what the deal is. They're going to know, okay, this is the situation. They're working on it. This isn't someone that's just willy-nilly removing their mask for whatever reason. There's, this is what they're doing. They're really working on something and they're trying to build this skill. Um, another one, and these might be consecutive steps. You might be, you know, something as you go. Uh, walk through a store and don't buy anything. That's kind of the same thing with a mini mart or 7-Eleven. You walk in, you walk out, you make it 30 seconds, maybe a minute. Um, in the grocery store I go to, they've shut down because there's so many people doing the, the pickup. They've shut down one of the entrances, but like at a grocery store, there's usually two entrances, you know, at either ends of the parking lot. So walk in one end, walk all the way through, exit the other end, quick and dirty. Um, Home Depot is another one there. Um, trying to think of other places like Walmart. It depends on Walmart. Some of them have like a giant one, you know, single entrance. Uh, Target has one entrance. That might not be the best thing. It's also with a Walmart or a Target. Uh, those have a lot of reinforcing things that students are going to want to maybe look at. You know, the toy aisle, the candy, the, the TV screens, whatever your student's into might not be the thing. Maybe going to a neutral place. I always say Home Depot because it's some students are going to like stuff there, but predominantly most of them aren't. But finding a place that you can go that you're not going to have that high incident, you're not going to have a bunch of stuff right in front of them they want. So what you're really working on is just a, a quick walkthrough and keeping that mask on. Uh, and again, I kind of included in the, the one at the end is walking around the park. Um, you know, a lot of activities right now, a lot of the re regulations are telling us that we can gather with other folks if we socially distance and mask up when we're even outside. Um, sounds like it's going to be more strict pretty soon. Um, with that consideration, they're still going to have to mask up even if you're around the park, but wearing, you know, walking around a park um, or walking around a playground or walking around, um, you know, going to the lake or something, going to the river, um, practice there where there's not people around. It's a lower stress environment in general um, because you don't have that pressure of a store where there's people watching and, you know, everyone's kind of stressed. Um, so start out with the shorter trip, start out with the easier stuff, uh, you know, use your training wheels, you, know, you make yourself successful before you start pulling that away and trying to go to, to, you know, Costco. I always say Costco. I, um, I've actually had, uh, when I've done community outings, I, I always say that Ikea is the, uh, the ultimate, like the, the graduation ceremony. If you can do Ikea, because it is unlike any other store that you go to, because you have to walk so much to get anywhere and there's really not much to look at uh, if you're on the spectrum there's well maybe if you're into beds and furniture it might be your place but um you know there's not a lot to look at there's it's just a lot of walking and it's very confusing because it's not aisles that you can see where you're going i had a student that was really had trouble with that and uh, thankfully they have arrows on the on the on the ground so follow the arrows but um start off lower um the next one when you're looking to do a, a slightly longer trip out Again, you can do some of these same things that I already mentioned, the 7-Eleven mini marts. Um, I said, go in and buy one item. Uh, prefer the, the learner, you leave. Again, you're gonna set the deal with this, but then you leave and you give that to them if they wore the mask. You set the deal. Okay, we're gonna go in, you wear your mask. We're gonna go in, we're gonna get a something. I'll mention that in a second. Uh, you go, you purchase it. Maybe you do the self checkout so it's quicker. Um, get out, get back to the car, take the mask off, and they get it. Um, on campus, we do not use edible reinforcers. You're at home, you can choose to use edible reinforcers. I'm not recommending it, but it is a tool for your toolbox. So um, for instance, if you were gonna go to a mini mart or even a grocery store, you go into the checkout. If your student loves Snickers, you walk in, you find a Snickers or whatever it might be, they grab the Snickers, you pay for it, you leave, you give them the Snickers. Um, again, on campus, we don't use edible reinforcers, but you're on your own and I want this to be successful. So if that's what's gonna get you, you know, success, then maybe that's where you start. You start with something like that. Um, maybe not a whole Snickers, maybe you can find something else that's smaller. I don't know. Um, so let's see, 
uh, as with all the steps I talked about before, provide that praise, make it a positive experience. Again, a Snickers bar is going to make that a positive experience, um, but it might be something tangible. If your students, um, you know, at the grocery store we go to, I know they have little stuffed animals and stuff. There's Pez dispensers, there's little toys, things. You know, if your student's into something like that or, or any store that you know, that you can go in and there's something closer to the, the front. Um, you know, Target has those little dollar bins and stuff, little bins and stuff. There's something there that you know your learner would love to have. That might be a quick one, might be a quick one. Again, I would, when you're starting the next step of trying to go to longer trips, just like the earlier ones, you're going to probably want to go when it's quieter. Um, I realized just locally where I'm at, Sunday night is the time to go to the grocery store. It was dead when you go there. So that would be the time I do practice. Uh, maybe not too late in the evening, but um, find a happy medium to where you're getting, you're setting yourself up for success by having a quieter environment. So it's lesser stress on you and you should be able to check out quicker. Um, that's a bigger issue is to be able to get, get in and get out. Um, provide the praise, make it a positive experience. And then from there, extend the time. The same as what we talked about in the other slide. You slowly integrate where you expect them to put it on for 10 seconds, for one second, for 20 seconds, depending on what it is. You're going to do the same thing here. You're not going to jump to do a full shopping trip for you know a family of seven um, on the second day. Uh, that's not going to happen. Uh, I mean, it's not. It, you can try it, but it's probably not going to be successful. So you want to start off with um, something lower, something one item, two items, three items. I'm like the count right now, but you want to extend it slowly. Don't forget to use the the tokens, the first ends, the the setting that deal, making sure that the the expectations are there. Um, something I didn't mention any of this is the visuals. Making sure you have the visuals. Maybe you have the visual of the mask. Um, again, I always say this with all the videos. You know, reach out to your your teachers. Uh, I know we have social narratives. We have social stories for mask wearing. Uh, I know I've made a couple um, different materials, but I know they have a ton. So if you need something like that, um, please reach out to your teacher. Um, and then the last, I'm going to kind of review. So again, assess your learner, medical history, you know, medical history, if there's resistance, sensory preferences, find a mask that's appropriate for your learner. So find something that's going to work for them. If you know they have that, if they're texture or sensory uh, issues with that, you want to find a looser mask or cleaner mask, maybe a Lycra or something, a thinner material. Um, introduction and exploration, you're going to let it be positive thing. You're not going to require them first time to put the mask on. Then you're going to work on the first time at home. And again, it's not going to be the first time on, but it might be approaching the face. Then you extend the time. Then you do the first community and then you extend the time. And on the bottom right, I have remember slow and steady. So again, as always, I always say, you know, um, I'm doing this from distance. If you have an in-home ABA provider, please lean on them. Um, you know, they, that's what they're there for. And this is clearly a crucial skill for all of our students right now. Um, and it doesn't matter really what age. Uh, a community, a, you know, lack of access to community would fall under almost any, any funding source that I, can, that I can put together in my mind. So um, lean on them. If you need materials or you need just to chat, t pull, uh, you know, reach out to your teachers, um, teacher. Um, if you need materials, same thing. Uh, again, so until next time, I appreciate it and um, we'll see you soon.